Have you ever asked yourself, where is God? You know, when you're hurting. You know, why is God hiding? Why can't you feel his presence? <laughs> well, if you're like most of us, you've done this a time or two. Now, would it surprise you that Jesus knew this was going to happen? He knew that this was an unfair world, and he even gave us a heads up that we would experience trouble, hurt, doubt, that we'd, we would even come to doubt our relationship with him. Would that surprise you to know this? Well, my name's Charles. Grab yourself some coffee. And let's talk about it. Now, the first thing that I find is that this world is truly an unfair place. I mean, we may wish it otherwise. We may even try to do things to make it more equitable. But no matter how much we wish it different, no matter how much we try to do, it simply will never be completely fair or trouble-free. There's just too many free radicals like you and I walk, walking around. You know, human beings, fallen human beings, people prone to being quite selfish. And as long as there's us, there will be problems. Now, be that as it may, though, what has that to do with our question about where is God when I'm hurting? Now, I think that it begins with something Jesus tells us. Now, this is a paraphrase, and I put two or three passages together, right? But I think I've done an okay job with that. I'll list all the passages in the description box below. Please check them out to make sure that I'm not getting things wrong by putting this together. But what I've put together, I find him to say this. He says, heads up, folks. In this world, you're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. It's on its way. Don't be naive. Keep your head on a swivel. Here it comes. But take heart. Be of good cheer, be bold, be courageous, and you will thrive. For I have conquered this world. I've overcome it. Been there, done that, have the t-shirt. Simply abide in me. Remain in me, and you will have a peace that passes your ability to understand where it comes from, and you will be more than a conqueror. You'll not only survive, you will thrive. You will become the conqueror. And I'm never going to leave you. I'll always be there to make sure you can conquer. Well, this being true, perhaps we have the wrong question. What if Jesus is always here, always nearby, and it is just that you happen not to see him at this moment? What if... The question isn't really, where is God, but rather, where am I? You know, I am, what if, what if it is that I am so focused on the storm that is now raging around me that rather like Peter, I have taken my eyes off of Jesus and become focused on the storm and so I've started to sink myself, but my sinking is in the waters of misery. What if? See, Jesus, we're told, is actually a very good friend who stays with us in the midst of everything. See, Jesus does indeed call us his friends because we know what he has made known to us. We know what he's about. We know what he wants to get done. Okay, we're his friends. Now. I find that this works both ways. So we are his friends because we know about him. We know what he's about. Just so, the great story of the gospel is that Jesus is our friend because he knows what we're about. He knows what we're going through. He knows our hurt. He knows our pain. He knows what it's like to be laughed at. He knows what it's like to have his reputation dragged through the mud. He knows what it is like to feel abandoned by God. He can completely identify with us, and he can help us thrive. Now, I also find it interesting that as Jesus always lived out everything the Father wanted him to do, and he never taught us anything that he wasn't living out, I find 
that he indeed is with you when you cry. And when you cry, he cries. When you laugh, he laughs. When you rejoice, he rejoices. When you mourn, he mourns. He can sympathize with us in our weaknesses. For he was tempted like we are. And he does know what it feels like to be abandoned by God, to have God hidden from view. He knows that pain personally. So he can truly be there with us and for us. Now, since the Bible has such powerful statements about God being with us, then, then, then we face a couple of different questions, don't we? And the questions are, is God lying to us? Is he really not there? Or is it just that our perception of the matter is mistaken? And another question truly is, are we indeed like Peter, who's so focused on the storm that he lost sight of the one standing right in front of him? See, it was Peter's focus that led to his sinking, not Jesus not being there. Now, if God is lying, we need to jump ship, don't we? What's the point of this whole Christian thing? However, if it is our perception that is off, well, that we can fix. Perhaps this is one of the reasons that, as we saw last time, that to love involves the mind. You know, our thoughts, our rationale, the ability to think things through, to be able to know things. See, this is the importance of studying the Bible, of reading the Bible every day and thinking about what you read day and night, night and day, ponder it, ingest it, make it how you live your life. And as we seek Jesus in Scripture and as we read all the Scripture, I, I think it's important to note that we need to focus on Him and Him alone. See, we don't need to focus on learning a new lesson, don't need to focus on getting inspiration, don't need to focus on guidance, don't focus on any of that. Seek Him and Him alone. For then, as you are seeking the King, you are indeed seeking His kingdom. And as we seek Him first, we're told, all these other things will be added to us. The lessons, the guidance, the inspiration, the peace that passes all understanding will be added to us as we focus on Christ alone. Now, you may be asking, you know, if he's such a good friend, why doesn't he just simply fix the situation? You know, why doesn't he simply remove that which is causing us to have our skewed perception in the first place? Well, what if in doing so, he would actually be hurting us more than, he, than we are hurting by his allowing us to go through the pain because he is standing there with us. See, what if his standing there with us, you know, through the midst of the pain is actually much better for us than his stopping it from ever happening? Now, how could that be? How could it be better for us to go through the pain? Well, that's the topic for a different video. I, and I say that because to answer that fully would take much too much time in this video. I don't have enough time to go over it. Now, I will say that I have recorded a video and posted it uh, concerning this called, How Can a Relational God Allow Evil to Continue in the World? And I'll link to that in the description box below, and it'll be in a card somewhere up here somewhere. And that will tell you, uh, give you some of the background information for it. But for now, but for now, you do have the answer that we came to talk about, to the question we originally asked. You know, the answer to the question, where is God when we're hurting? And the answer is, he's right beside you and is dwelling in you with the Holy Spirit. And you now also know that while the feeling may be missing and you can't sense his presence in any way, you can be proof positive certain that this is just your current perception and not the actual state of the matter. It's not the actual facts. Now, here's another interesting dynamic to this. Perhaps, just perhaps, God only makes us aware of his presence in the exact amount we need 
in order to continue to grow in an all-embracing, loving relationship with Him. And He does not allow us to feel His presence when that would get in the way of our growth in this relationship. Isn't that a thought? So love simply, love wisely, and love well, and know that Jesus is your friend and He will never leave you. See, focus on Him, on knowing Him alone, and He will cause you to thrive, even in the midst of your adversity. See, this, doing this, is where you can begin to fully enjoy the depths of that French press style of faith, a faith that, well, just like a most excellent cup of coffee, is simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Well, tell me what you think in the comment section below. And also, please click on that like and the subscribe button and make sure to click on that little gray bell icon that shows up and tell YouTube that you want to be noted, notified each and every time a new conversation is posted. And please share this with a friend for good coffee and good conversation loves good company. Well, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy, and I'll catch you next time.